What's up guys, I'm Zach from Workshop Edits. In today's project, I wanna take you through how I built this gigantic white oak and steel kitchen table. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we are here in the shop. We have all of the material that we need to build the tabletop. Really excited about this one, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so boards are cut to their rough final length. I used the joiner to make sure that one side was completely square, and then I ripped the other edge square over at the table saw. These boards are not all the same length, but that's not a big deal because they're gonna be glued up as one giant panel. The other thing I did was these boards, they should come all the exact same thickness from the hardwood dealer that I got them from, but just in the off chance they're not, I also picked the side that was eventually going to be the top and planed that down. That way they're all the exact same thickness and then I also know which side I'm gonna eventually use as the tabletop. So we're gonna organize the boards and then we're gonna to get to drilling dowels. Now I'm gonna be using this $20 jig from Rockler to do that. It works perfectly well. It takes a little bit more time than something like a domino, but it's really good at creating a strong joint and it keeps things lined up perfectly, which I wanna do as best as possible to just make sure these boards are lined up when I glue them together and that I don't have to eventually plane them down and lose some of the thickness. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I have all the boards ordered how I want them. I've also marked them just to keep track of everything. You can see, actually, they're not all perfectly flat, but once things are glued up, it should be um, relatively straight. I also have them lined up uh, laterally just to try to get rid of some of these knots, and I actually have enough material, which is great, so that once I cut this thing to final length, there's not gonna be any um, imperfections on top. So the way that the dowel jig works is you're gonna have to drill a dowel on each side of the board. So what I'm gonna do is just go along here, and I think I'm probably only gonna use five per joint, and I'm just going to you know, use my speed square, which is 90 degrees, line up the two boards that I want, pick exactly where I want my dowel to go, and then I'm just gonna draw a line that goes between the two of them, because then the way that this works is, there's a little line on this jig, I'll line it up on each side, clamp it down, drill that hole, and then those boards should slide together perfectly. All right, so all of the holes are now cut for the dowel, so the next thing we're gonna do is head over to the table saw, and we're just gonna cut this half-inch dowel that I got from Lowe's into a bunch of tiny little pieces, then we can get on to assembly, so let's do that. All right, so dowels are cut. I also sanded down the edges of them. It makes it a little bit easier to hammer those in and not be such a tight fit. So now we're gonna glue these up. So what I've found with doing these big panel glue ups is that it's easier to glue just one or two panels together at a time. Uh, because I have five of them, what I'm gonna do is just glue two sets of two and then I'll probably come back in an hour or so once that glue has set up properly, scrape away any of the excess and then glue the third panel to another one and then come back an hour later and glue all five of them together. It's just gonna help keep things flat and allow me to control uh, the final output of this thing and then eventually just avoid having to do a lot of extra cleanup on the end because I don't have a, a giant planer that I could run this through or even a drum sander to do it. All right, so the tabletop has been sanded up to 220 grit. 
I started off with 60 and then went up to 120 on the orbital sander and then used 220 with some hand sanding just to smooth these things out perfectly. I also sanded up to 60 grit on the bottom side. The next thing that I want to do is cut this to its final length. So what we did off camera was bring the tabletop inside to where it's going to be and figure out exactly how long we want it to be. And we landed on six feet, 72 inches. So I've marked out uh, exactly how I want to cut this. I have it flipped over on its bottom side because I'm going to use my circular saw to cut it. And by having it flipped over on the other side, the way that the circular saw blade rotates is going to prevent tear out on the top side. I'm also just going to do a test cut to see if I have to lay down some blue tape. Just want this to cut as clean as possible, but really excited to see this in its uh, final size. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, so the tabletop is now sanded up to 220 grit. I also used a spray bottle, some water to wet the top surface of the table, raise the fibers in the wood, and then sand those down again that way because this is a kitchen tabletop. When it gets wet in the future, it's not gonna become rough over time, so that's good to go. The other thing I did was just use a chamfer bit and add a very small bevel to the top and bottom edges of the table. Gives it a little bit of a nicer aesthetic and it's also just gonna be easier on the wrist. So the next thing we're going to do is apply finish to this thing. And so for this project, I'm using Rubio Monocoat in cotton white. There are a ton of videos out there on how to apply this finish properly. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on it. If you do wanna learn more about it, I'll leave a link to a video from the Wood Whisperer, Mark Spagnola in the description. He has a great video on applying this finish. For this project specifically, we're gonna be using the two-part mix, which has the accelerator in it, because if you don't use that, it takes about 21 days for it to cure, and I just don't have that kind of time. So what we're gonna do first is just clean everything off with acetone, mineral spirits, get rid of all that dust. Then we're going to apply the finish, buff it in, and then wipe away all the excess of it. I'm just gonna work here, let you watch. If you wanna learn more about it, again, check out the link in that video description. All right, so I just finished applying the Rubio Monocoat to the top of the table, and what you probably noticed was how much whiter it was on the top versus the bottom. And what I didn't realize, just having never used the finish before, so a little tip, is always mix the Rubio Monocoat finish uh, before you use it. I think my product had just sat on the shelf for so long that the different components of it had started to separate, which meant that the cotton white color wasn't properly mixed with the other oils. So. Having done that before doing it on this top coat, it came out much better. It is beautiful. So we are gonna let that cure now for a week and move our attention to the base. So the base is made entirely out of three inch square steel. The legs themselves have a seven and a half degree angle to them. So what we're going to do is break all of those components down using the metal chop saw. So we're gonna set the chop saw at seven and a half degrees just using my protractor cut all those pieces so that they all have the exact same seven and a half degree angle. Then we can move on to welding everything up. All right, so all of the steel pieces have been cut. That includes four legs, two small cross horizontal supports, one long horizontal support that's going to connect both of the leg bases, and then the flat three inch stock that's going to actually attach to the top of the legs and fasten the legs to the table. And then I also cut smaller three by three inch pieces that are going to go at the bottom of each of the legs so there's a nice flat space to put something underneath those to eventually protect the floor. The next thing that we're gonna do is take all the pieces that we just cut, use the angle grinder and a flak disc to clean them up and prepare them for welding. And then we're gonna be ready to start assembling this table.
All right, so the tabletop is completely welded up and it has been cleaned off with a degreaser, so that is good to go. I went back, I marked out, and I drilled out uh, pilot holes that's going to later accept the screws, which will screw up under into the tabletop. So what I wanna do is bring in the table. The table's been carrying for about five days, so the oil's about 90% good to go. Should be plenty fine to work with. What I wanna do is sit it on top of the table, measure and mark out exactly where the flat plated steel is going to touch the table and then I'm going to actually route out an eighth inch deep groove that's going to accept that metal. That way the base will sit flush with the underside of the tabletop. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, everything has been routed out. I also pre-drilled holes and I used just a piece of tape to mark the depth that I wanted to drill through just so I didn't drill through the tabletop. The last thing I wanna do is because the base of this table is steel and we want to keep it as a raw steel look is I'm going to go over the entire piece with my orbital sander using 80 grit and then 120 grit. And what that's gonna do is just give the steel a nice kind of uniform look uh, and kind of blend together all of the welding places and the places that I cleaned it off using the angle grinder. And overall, it's just gonna give it a nice complete look. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna follow up, clean the entire thing off with acetone, and then just give it a clear coat with the rattle can. That way the raw steel is protected and it's not going to rust over time. And once that clear coat dries, we're gonna be ready for final assembly. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I am thrilled with how this thing came out. I just think it came out, it's so beautiful. The white oak with that stain is just awesome. The steel base is just super clean. I, overall, so excited to have it in our kitchen. If you did enjoy the video, just let me know by hitting that like button. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel for any future videos. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video for whatever it is that I'm building. Bye.